Hey guys, I'm Stephanie and this is Steph Stove. And today I'm gonna to be making you a dessert that is kind of iconic for South Georgia. It is peach cobbler. It is wonderful. You can have it um, many different ways with several different toppings. But today I hope you enjoy the method that I'm gonna use and it is utilizing canned peaches instead of fresh because most of the times throughout the year, we do gen generally have more canned peaches available to us than necessarily fresh peaches. So with that being said, let's make some cobbler. First of all, we need to come in and preheat our oven. So I'm gonna preheat it to 350 degrees and get this cobbler going. While our oven is preheating, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay out in the bottom of my casserole dish six tablespoons of butter. So this is almost one stick. So if you'll see it's marked right here. So we're gonna use one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna come in and cut this off. You get a little smidge more, that's fine. A little less, that's that'll be fine too. So I'm gonna tear that off and we'll use that later. I'm just gonna open this up and add us our butter to the bottom of the dish. It's not gonna go into our mixture. It's just gonna go in here. So I'm going to just kind of chop it up through here in smaller pieces and um, kind of line my pan, so to speak, with the butter. You don't have to spray your pan for this. I generally do not because of the butter being at the bottom. Kind of even pieces. And I'm gonna move that around. That one's a little thick. It's gonna melt, so it's not really huge difference there, but I do like to try to keep them about the same. Now, so with this right here, we are gonna place this dish in the oven for our butter to melt. All right, so while our oven is preheating and we have our baking dish with our butter lined in the bottom in it during the preheat process, we're gonna go ahead and put our batter together. So for our batter, we're gonna add one cup of all-purpose flour and one cup of sugar, just plain granulated sugar. Get all of that out. And to this, we are gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder, or baking powder. I'm gonna put the Southern twist on that. And a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna use a wire whisk and kind of whisk this together. Kind of incorporate all of it. Just want to be sure that all the ingredients are kind of mixed together well. And to this, I'm going to add um, three fourths of a cup of milk. Now I do use 2% milk. You're welcome to use whole milk, anything. I don't think I would use skim milk because you do need some richness to it, um, but 2% is just fine. And then I'm going to whisk this together. And if you've never made um, peach cobbler or any other kind of cobbler, the batter is pretty much the secret. I would say because if the batter is not right, the cobbler won't turn out well. And this is a quick dessert. It's kind of um, liked by many. So it's really easy to make and kind of quick to whip up. So there is our batter mixture. And then once our pan comes out of the oven, we'll go ahead and assemble it. All right, our oven has come up to temperature and our butter has melted in the bottom. And to the bottom of this pan, I'm gonna add two cans of peaches in heavy syrup. Now, if you wanna do light, that's fine, but I just prefer the heavy syrup. And this is 15.25 um, ounces. I'm gonna add two cans of these. opened. Here we go. I'm going to pour the entire mixture. Oh, I always makes that nice little funny release sound into the bottom of my container. And to this, we are going to simply add our batter on top of our peaches and our juice.
And to the top of this, I'm gonna lightly dust it with some ground cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon, you um, definitely don't have um, to do this. I'm actually gonna put this in my hand because my container's almost out and I wanna control how much I'm putting on here. So just a little bit to give it some extra flavor. Now these, um, during certain times of the year, you can even get cinnamon peaches. I've noticed those, especially closer to the fall. And that would be a great idea as well. All right, now we are gonna add this back to a 350 degree oven. Here it goes in the oven. And I do go ahead and put my cobbler on a cookie sheet to bake just in case there's any juices it can spill over to the cookie sheet and not to my oven. So we're gonna check back in 30 minutes. All right guys, our timer has just went off and we did originally go back and add about 15 more minutes to our timer. So we had a bake time of a total of 45 minutes. It just kind of depends on the cans, how much juices are in them and the weather. But our outcome, oh, look at that, is beautiful. There we go. Let me close the door. There we have it, guys. A beautiful peach cobbler. I'm Stephanie, and this is Steph Stave. And remember, we're making memories and peach cobbler one dish at a time. And remember, when you're making anything like this, you want to be sure that you make it until it's firm. Cooking times will change depending on a lot of factors. Um, so always double check them. I did end up cooking this one for about 45 minutes. Um, so double check yours each time because every time you make it, it could be um, slightly off depending on, again, multiple things that are going on. But I do hope you enjoy this peach cobbler. And let me know, drop me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from and where you're making your peach cobbler and if you made it. So from my house to yours, enjoy some peach cobbler and make some memories in the kitchen. And when you're enjoying your peach cobbler, there's nothing better, according to my mammy, than having your peach cobbler, not with ice cream, but with a nice little drizzle of good evaporated milk. Mm, just makes it extra yummy and delicious.